get my canvas ready for my next new painting. It takes a couple of days work. The canvas gets about six coats of primers. Then meticulously and very gingerly I go over wet and dry sandpaper until I get it like a sheet of glass. And that's just before I even put my first pencil line down. Painting the stones, I put the paint on the rocks that it's transparent that you can slightly see through it. Then I use cotton buds to remove a lot of the paint. It makes the rocks look very, very natural, very realistic because there's no brush strokes. And now very, very carefully sandpaper rubbing on the rocks very carefully and you get lovely effects you couldn't do this with a paintbrush brings up unbelievable detail now using primers and a bit of a sponge. I'm giving texture to the mountains in the background. You can use a paintbrush doing it. You can use your fingers, you can do anything you want, but it's just to get a rough surface. And then when we're painting the mountains afterwards and when we use our bit of sandpaper, this work I'm doing now will pay dividends. It's very slowly starting to take shape. Now I'm painting under the water. It's all about getting the exact, exact colour exactly right. If you don't get it exactly right, the illusion is lost. And painting the colours of stones as if they're down deep under the water to give the illusion of depth. I'm very, very pleased with the way it's coming on. You can see all the stones under the water, no matter where you look. Now with very watery paint, I'm building up the colour scheme of all the grass and the moss and the stones. And eventually, when I'm happy, I'll move on and literally put in millions of blades of grass on top of this work.
you have to think of the shape of the stones and one edge of the stone will be in darkness and the other bit towards the light of course will be brighter so you have to go over every single stone and give them darkness and then this is a very very slow procedure of going over every single stone and then a really dark shadow and these stones are slightly three-dimensional because a lot of them are painted with white pure white paint and colored in and they're actually sitting out slightly from the canvas now I'm putting in dead leaves very very quickly the fun will start afterwards when I have to go over each one individually give them detail and give them shadows and light but for now it's just quick little flicks of the brush to build up a mass of dead leaves and stones and things it's all a work in progress and now I'm putting down a yellowy browny wash it's very transparent it's like moss on the ground and it's not affecting the blades of grass that I've done already I'm removing some of the brown paint that I just put on with the washes and bringing back the brightness as if the light's catching it. And now I'm using white primers watered down and I'm going over each individual stone, making them bright at one side. It's very, very time consuming. And it makes them look like as if they're kind of wet, as if it's after raining on them making them almost like shiny then I have to go over every single stone and give them a dark dark shadow lots of them don't have a shadow yet a lot of people say to me when they see my finished paintings they say oh my god you have unbelievable patience doing all of those stones it must have taken you months but you don't need patience for doing something that you love but I must confess <laughs> I have great patience The pencil lines burned through the paint because the paint was put on not very thick and you can see the pencil lines are still there. Painting the straight lines of the edge of the seats is very difficult. You could mask and tape it in but with the mask and tape it looks very artificial it doesn't look natural the line would be just too straight so you're better off just to do it by hand but don't have a lot of drink before <laughs> don't have a lot of drink before you're doing this type of work because you'll go crooked and there's no room for error 
We're getting there slowly. Still a lot of work to do to it. That's a lollipop. I cut the handle off it and I stuck a needle with a bit of sellotape. And this here is a great little tool. Now I'm going back to my boat and I'm scratching the boat like as if there's real little scratches on it. Because the boats get scratched going in and out when they're near trees and things. There's always scratches in boats and I'm scratching the boats to make them more and more realistic. When you look at them really carefully, you can actually see all the scratches. You want the steady hand painting those rivets. I'm putting light on the little handle for starting the engine. I think I'm going to have a nervous breakdown doing this painting. You can see the little rod holders for trolling and the petrol tank in the engines and the little rivets on the boats. I'm at this picture now five weeks but there's still a lot of work to do to it. All the ropes have to go in, tires, the detail has to go in the tires, the tires will be filled with concrete and the little metal bars that the ropes go onto them. And when that's all done and everything is actually done, for me the fun starts because I get really excited then doing the painting. Because I look at the painting and people see it and they think, oh your painting's finished. And I say, no, it's only just started. And they go, what? I say, it's only just started. There's about five weeks work. And they'd laugh at me and I say, no, honestly, there's about five weeks work. And I spend day after day after day improving it, not adding anything extra into it but improving what's there going over the blades of grass giving them detail giving them two sides giving them light going over each little pebble i go over the whole thing inch by inch inch by inch inch by inch day after day week after week until finally i reckon five weeks maybe a little bit less but finally when i think yeah it's finished i've come to the end of my talent Somebody else who's a better artist than me could look at it and go, ah, there's another week in that. And I'd say, is there? I can't do it any better. I've done my best. And I do do the painting. And I do the paints to my very best. So this painting will be for sale in about five weeks' time. And in five weeks' time, I'll put another video up on YouTube with the finished picture. And I'll probably use my little matchstick technique to try and show the detail. All the background, all the moons in the background there, the detail, it isn't there yet. It's just not correct. It looks okay from a distance. And if you stand back looking at the painting, the painting, you could say it's finished. The painting's finished. But I'm a perfectionist. My work is best when you actually come up and look at it as close as you can. And as a matter of fact, it's actually at its best if you use the magnifying glass to look at it because you have to use the magnifying glass to actually see the work that I've done. So in five weeks' time, I'll have a new video up of this finished painting and it'll be for sale. Thank you. Hope you enjoyed my techniques. Some of them. I'm the artist. No. That... One. Three. Right. Wait. <laughs> right. Come on, yeah. <laughs> One second. One. You're useless at this. All right. So this video One, on two, three, go. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the artist that did the no. painting. No. One. Two, this three, ah, come on. One, th right, one, three, two, one, go. I'm the artist who did the painting, and the painting is of a very famous lake in Ireland called Loch Cran in Waterville in County Kerry, and it's famous for its sea trout. So anybody out there who's interested in the painting, you will see the finished painting in about five weeks' time when I put it up on YouTube, and it'll be for sale, and I'll hope to hear from you then. Thank you very much. Bye. <laughs> Email address is vincent.fishy at gmail.com.